Hello and welcome to this communion service during a time of lockdown. And just know that all of us here at St Luke's are thinking of you and praying for you even though we can't be together every Sunday as we usually are. And for those of you who are visitors and have found us on YouTube or Facebook, you are very, very welcome and we're pleased to have you along and we hope that you'll find our service this morning to be a blessing. Well, we've certainly had a troubled week, haven't we? So what better time is there now to take this moment to draw aside around the communion table with the Lord to share our concerns, our worries and our anxieties with him and to draw strength from him. So let's begin our service now. Oh, by the way, one thing you'll need if you're going to join us in communion is, of course, bread and wine. So, when you're ready, we'll now begin our service. Grace, mercy and peace from God our Father and the Lord Jesus Christ be with you. And we can begin with our first hymn and invite you to stand up wherever you are and sing it with us. Breathe on me, breath of God. What a lovely hymn that was. And now let us pray together. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hidden, cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen. Our Lord Jesus Christ said, The first commandment is this, Hear, O Israel, the Lord our God is the only Lord, and you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your mind, and with all your strength. And the second is this, Love your neighbour as yourself. There is no other commandment greater than these, and on these two commandments hang all the law and the prophets. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Hear what comfortable words our Saviour Christ says to all who truly turn to him. Come to me all who labour and are heavy laden, and I will give you rest. And that God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son, so that all who believed in him should not perish but have everlasting life. Hear also what St Paul says. This is a true saying and worthy of all men to be received, that Christ Jesus came into the world to save sinners, and that while we were still sinners, Christ died for us. If any man sin, we have an advocate with the Father, Jesus Christ the righteous, and he is the perfect offering for our sins, and not for ours only, but for the sins of the whole world. Let us therefore confess our sins in penitence and faith. Almighty God, our Heavenly Father, we have sinned against you and against our neighbour in thought and word and deed, through negligence, through weakness, through our own deliberate fault. 
we are truly sorry and repent of all our sins for the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, who died for us. Forgive us all that is past and grant that we may serve you in newness of life to the glory of your name. Amen. Lord, have mercy. Christ, have mercy. Lord, have mercy. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you. Pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Now we say together the Gloria. Glory to God in the highest, and peace to his people on earth. Lord God, Heavenly King, Almighty God and Father, we worship you, we give you thanks, we praise you for your glory. Lord Jesus Christ, only Son of the Father, Lord God, Lamb of God, you take away the sin of the world, have mercy on us. You are seated at the right hand of the Father, receive our prayer. For you alone are the Holy One, you alone are the Lord, you alone are the Most High, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit, in the glory of God the Father. Amen. Our colic for today, which is the first Sunday after Trinity. Let us pray. O God, the strength of all those who put their trust in you, mercifully accept our prayers. And because through weakness of our mortal nature, we can do no good thing without you. Grant us the help of your grace, that in keeping of your commandments we may please you both in will and deed, through Jesus Christ your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God, now and for ever. Amen. And our readings for today, the first comes from the Epistle to the Romans, and we're going to read chapter 5, verses 1 to 8. That's Romans 5, verses 1 to 8. Therefore, since we have been justified through faith, we have peace with God through our Lord Jesus Christ, through whom we have gained access by faith into his grace, in which we now stand. And we rejoice in the hope of God. Not only so, but we also rejoice in our sufferings, because we know that sufferings produces perseverance, perseverance character, and character hope. And hope does not disappoint us, because God has poured out his love into our hearts by the Holy Spirit whom he has given us. You see, at just the right time, when we were still powerless, Christ died for the ungodly. Very rarely will anyone die for a righteous man, though for a good man someone might possibly dare to die. But God demonstrates his own love for us in this. While we were still sinners, Christ died for us. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. And our Gospel reading now comes from the Gospel of St Matthew and we're going to read chapter 9 verses 35 through to chapter 10 verse 8. Jesus went through all the towns and villages teaching in their synagogues, preaching the good news of the kingdom and healing every disease and sickness. When he saw the crowds he had compassion on them because they were harassed and helpless like sheep without a shepherd. Then he said to his disciples, The harvest is plentiful, but the workers are few. Ask the Lord of the harvest, therefore, to send out workers into his harvest field. He called his twelve disciples to him, and gave them authority to drive out evil spirits, and to heal every disease and sickness. These are the names of the twelve apostles. First Simon, who is called Peter, and his brother Andrew, James, son of Zebedee, and his brother John, 
Philip and Bartholomew, Thomas and Matthew the tax collector, James the son of Alphaeus and Thaddeus, Simon the zealot and Judas Iscariot who betrayed him. These twelve Jesus sent out with the following instructions. Do not go among the Gentiles or enter any town of the Samaritans. Go rather to the lost sheep of Israel. As you go, preach this message. The kingdom of heaven is near. Heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those who have leprosy, drive out demons. Freely you have given, freely receive. And now before our vicar, Rob Grinsell, comes and brings us this week's message from the Word of God, we're going to sing again, and we're going to sing that wonderful hymn, Oh for a Thousand Tongues. Now it might be a slightly different tune to the one we used to hear at St Luke's, but I think it's a lovely tune anyway, so I've included it. Oh for a Thousand Tongues. Welcome. We're going to talk this morning about the subject of anxiety. It's something which we all experience, it's something we all endure, if you like, in life. And, um, and it's a perfectly natural thing, but it can be really difficult for us. And, and it can be a really difficult thing, not only to experience and endure in normal times, but especially in these times as well. And I've, if I look back through my own life, I've, I've been through uh, times of real desperate anxiety. And I've really struggled with anxiety. And it's only in recent years that I actually feel I've had some breakthrough um, in anxiety. And if you, if you have uh, a real struggle with anxiety, I just pray in this short time that we've got together that you see a breakthrough in your heart and in your life through it. I just want you to have that breakthrough. And I want us to, to be able to see the Lord's hand at work in us, in our lives, so we can know the love and the power and the peace and the presence of God for us and in us. You know, what's interesting is that the Lord really cares about anxiety. And we see this because in the great Sermon on the Mount, the great principal sermon that Jesus gives to his disciples and to his followers and to, to the world, he talks about all the major themes. He talks about he put prayer and fasting and giving. And he also talks about 
anxiety as well, because God cares that we feel anxious. So in verse 25 of Matthew chapter 6, Right way through, if you like, halfway through the great Sermon on the Mount, Jesus says, Therefore I tell you, do not worry about your life, what you'll eat or drink, or about your body, what you will wear. Is not life more important than food, the body more important than clothes? Look at the birds of the air, or in fact in the Greek it says, consider the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, yet your Father, your Heavenly Father, feeds them. Are you not much so much more valuable than they? Who of you, by worrying, can add a single hour to their life? I mean, the interesting thing about what Jesus says here is that he gives really practical advice. He says, consider, think about these things. It's all right to have practical advice. And there's all kinds of practical advice we can get about anxiety. But Jesus just gives three points here that are really interesting. He says, firstly, about anxiety, is life not more important than food, in verse 25? And then he says, can you add a single hour to your life through worrying, verse 27? And then he says, don't worry about tomorrow. Tomorrow will worry about itself, verse 34. In other words, in these things, Jesus is saying, I want you to test anxiety. I want you to test it. I want you to scrutinize it. I want you to question it. And, and, and by doing so, take the power out of it. You know, why, why am I feeling this? And, 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 and is this even a realistic anxiety for me to feel? And if I, if I were to try and, and take this anxiety and what I'm feeling at the moment and just reduce that just to one sentence, what would it be? Am I going to feel this way in a week's time? Am I going to be just as anxious about this in two weeks or a month's time or a year's time? And, I mean, why am I going through this? So we begin to, if you like, dismantle the anxiety. We begin to take the power out of it. And he does that because he says, look, anxiety is just such a waste of time. It is such a waste of time. Now, Mark Twain has got some, <laughs> he's got some great quotes. I love the quotes attributed to Mark Twain. I'm not entirely sure every quote that's attributed to Mark Twain came from Mark Twain, but this one definitely did because it's in his writings. He's one of the greats of American authors, historical American authors. He says, I've been through some terrible things in my life, some of which have actually happened. You know, anxiety can be just such a drain on us and just a waste of our time. And and he just Jesus then says to us, look, you need to know the love of the Father. You need to have such a sense of the love of the Father that it stabilizes you. It kind of it reinforces you against these worries and against these fears. And so Jesus says in verse 26, he says this. He says, consider the birds of the air. Consider the birds of the air. They do not sow or reap or store away in barns, yet your heavenly Father feeds them. Are you not much, much more valuable than they? In other words, what Jesus is saying to us is he's saying, I want you to cultivate the evidence of the Father's love for you. I want you to think about how the Father loves you. How has the Lord loved me? How has he sustained you and kept you over the years? You know, what, what testimony could you give right now of the Father's love and of the Father's faithfulness to you? I want you to think about the everlasting, faithful love of the Father for you. And dwell on those things because he loves you with an everlasting love, Jeremiah says. In other words, that's not a love that's going to change. That's not a love that's going to alter or fade. It is going to be there forever. And he loves you as his child. And the more that we can cultivate that evidence, the more that we can, we can prove it to ourselves and declare it over ourselves 
and declare, you know, the Lord loves me with an everlasting love. And I know that the Lord loves me because, and these things have happened in my life, and I know that he's kept me and he's sustained me and he sustained me through it. And he will sustain me through this too. And he will, he will keep me through, through all the things that I fear and all the things that I worry about. And I'm going to declare those truths. And, and so the Lord wants you to just make that declaration. He wants you to, to focus and remind yourself and testify to your spirit the faithfulness and the perfection of his love for you. He has kept you and sustained you so far. And he will do the same continuously. And the very fact that he's given you his Holy Spirit is evidence of that. Because Paul writes in Romans 5.5, 5, God's love has been poured out into our hearts through the Holy Spirit who he has given to us. In other words, the very fact that we have the Spirit of God with us and that he is accompanying us and he will help us is the evidence of God's great love for us. The fact that he sent us Jesus and Jesus has died for you, risen again, brought you into a relationship with the Father. Jesus has allowed the Spirit of God to come and fill your heart. This evidence, this overwhelming, this irrefutable evidence of the love of God is, is what guards us. It guards our hearts, our minds and our spirits against a crushing anxiety. And John writes in John 4, 16, and so we know and rely on the, on the love that God has for us. That's what we rely on. Would you declare that scripture over your heart, over your life and into those situations so that we can know that he will take care of us through all these matters. Peter writes in 1 Peter 5, 7, cast all your anxiety on him because he cares for you. Because he cares for you. Now, in Philippians chapter 4, Paul gives us a strategy on how to deal with anxiety. He says in Philippians 4.4, 4, Rejoice in the Lord always. I will say it again, rejoice. Let your gentleness be evident to all, for the Lord is near. Do not be anxious about anything, but in every situation, by prayer and petition and with thanksgiving, present your requests to God. And the peace of God, which transcends all understanding, will guard your hearts and your minds in Christ Jesus. Now, I don't know about you, but when we get into difficulties and when we get into times of real anxieties, there's all kinds of things that we can do. There are kind of natural responses that we have to that. Uh, one of those is to avoid. So we go into a kind of avoidance. You know, we might just get a box set and just watch a box set under the blankets and not try and think about anything or have any, any kind of reaction to anything. Another one is assurance. We might want to contact people or um, contact people that we trust and, and, and just get assurance from them. And it could be the same person. And that can put a test on that relationship. But assurance and seeking assurance um, is one of the ways in which we naturally try to, to, get, uh, to get comfort in these, in these difficult times. Also, sadly, we might want stimulants as well. And so um, rather than just having that one biscuit, we might be thinking we're going to wade our way through the whole packet of biscuits because, you know, this is a very anxious moment and a very anxious time. And if it's a really bad situation, then we've got all three going on at the same time. We're under the blanket, watching the box set with our phone, seeking, seeking an assurance and wading our way through a couple of packets of biscuits. So this is a whole situation that we're in as human beings. And this is our kind of natural response that we have to, um, to anxiety. But Paul says, actually, there are, um, there are some things that we can do in the spirit that will really help us. He says, first of all, I want you to rejoice. Even in the face of the things that make us anxious, I want you to celebrate the Lord's faithfulness, declare his love for you. I want you to, to just to Declare over this situation, declare over your heart and over your life the faithful love of God 
and celebrate that love. And then he says, I want you to pray. Not just lifting the situation up to the Lord and the people up to the Lord, but, but lifting how you're feeling to him too. Tell him what you're feeling. Tell him what's going on. And then he says, I want you to give thanks. I want you to declare your gratitude to the Lord and acknowledge that he is faithful for you and that he is true. In other words, there's a, 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 a response that we can make, which is in our hearts and in our spirits in the face of anxiety. And it comes ultimately down to this declaration that we can make over ourselves about his love for us. If you are feeling really anxious at this time, or you're going through real difficulties of anxiety, or you struggle with anxiety generally, my, my prayer for you is that you find a breakthrough in that because you are reminded by yourself and by his spirit of just how much the Father cares for you, just how much he loves you. So may you know the love and the provision, the peace of God in your heart and in your lives. I'd like to just spend this last few moments that we have in this, this slot uh, just to, to pray for you um, if you are struggling with a depression or you're struggling with anxiety at this time. I just want to pray that the Lord comes and touches you and that you, are, uh, you find a real sense of release at this time. Let's pray. Father God, we just pray that your peace and your love come and fill us and overwhelm us, over, overflow within us so there's no room for fear. Perfect love casts out fear. It's just squeezed out of us by the presence of your love. And we pray, Father, that we would just declare over ourselves that your love is an unshakable, unchangeable, everlasting love. You've demonstrated that love to us by giving us your beloved son who died for us and rose again. And you confirm that love for us by providing the Holy Spirit to be with us enabling us to know that we are your children, loved of you and precious to you. And so, Father, we pray that we would just declare that. And we ask that as we declare that, your peace will come to us. You know, peace is not the absence of something. It's the presence of something. It's the presence of someone. And we pray that, Lord, your peace would be on us and in us and through us. May the peace of the Lord be with you. May you know just his touch and his provision in your life. And, and may, you, may you feel in the times when you would normally be really anxious that you are held by the Lord. You are held and you are kept by him the glory of Jesus. Amen. And that's my great desire. My, my desire is that anyone who feels at this, particularly at this time, um, you're feeling um, really anxious, you're feeling really distressed, may you know the faithfulness of his love in your life. May you cultivate that. And I would encourage you, declare over yourself over your life, over your loved ones and your situation, the faithfulness of God. Remind yourself of just how much the Lord has kept you, has held you in his hand, will never let you go and will always keep you. May you be truly blessed. Amen. Thank you, Rob. We're going to say together now the creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, 
of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father, through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation he came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit in the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate, he suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy, catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. And now, let us pray. And as we begin, we just have a moment of silence to bring our own concerns and worries before the Lord. Lord, we praise and worship you today because you are so mighty and are high and lifted up above all things. Yet nothing takes place in our lives, however small or trivial, that you don't see and care about. You, who flung the very stars into space, tell us to call you Father and desire each and every one of us to have a personal relationship with you. You are a God who cares so much that you sent your only Son to die for us. Father, we are so grateful for all you do for us, for all the blessings you give to us, for the joy you put into our hearts and the comfort you give us in times of trouble. So Lord, we come to you this morning to bring our concerns and prayers for our nation and this troubled world before you. We've seen many on our streets who are angry and hurting over the sins of the past. We see many in pain because they are treated differently because of their race or creed. Father, we ask in your mercy that you will bring healing to those in pain. We ask that you will pour out your spirit afresh on our land and bring again a great awakening and revive us to restore our nation to you. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. We pray for all those in government and who lead us. We pray that you will grant them wisdom in making the decisions that will be so vital for the future of this land. May they seek to rule and govern above party politics and seek to do what is best for all. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, we pray for all who are sick and ask that you will comfort them and grant them gifts of healing. For those who are terminally ill, we ask that they might know your comfort, presence and assurance at this difficult time. And we pray too, especially for all those working on the front line of the NHS, serving the sick, often above and beyond the call of duty during this difficult time of crisis. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Finally, we pray for our church family here at Hawkinge. We pray that during this time when we cannot meet together, you will unite us and keep us together. We pray that you will strengthen our resolve to be good servants to our community and powerful witnesses to love, to the love and salvation of Jesus Christ. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
Lord, in your mercy, we ask that you accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ. Amen. And now as we prepare our hearts to gather round the communion table with our vicar, Rob Grinsel, who will be leading us in the service this morning, we're going to sing that wonderful hymn, Man of Sorrows, What a Name. Eucharistic prayer B. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. Father, we give you thanks and praise for your beloved Son, Jesus Christ, your living word through whom you've created all things, who were sent by you in your great goodness to be our Saviour. By the power of the Holy Spirit, he took flesh as your Son, born of the Blessed Virgin. He lived on earth and went about among us. He opened wide his arms for us on the cross. He put an end to death by dying for us and revered the resurrection by rising to new life. And so he fulfilled your will and won for you a holy people. Therefore, with angels and archangels and with all the company of heaven, we proclaim your great and glorious name, forever praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. Lord, you are holy indeed, the source of all holiness. Grant that by the power of your Holy Spirit and according to your holy will, these gifts of bread and of wine
may be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ, who in the same night that he was betrayed took the bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave you thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you shall drink it in remembrance of me. Great is the mystery of faith. Christ has died, Christ is risen, Christ will come again. And so far the calling to mind his death on the cross, his perfect sacrifice made once for the sins of the whole world, rejoicing in his mighty resurrection and glorious ascension and looking for his coming in glory, we celebrate this memorial of our redemption. And as we offer you this, our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving, we bring before you this bread and this cup, and we thank you for counting us worthy to stand in your presence and serve you. Send the Holy Spirit on your people and gather into one in your kingdom all who share this one bread and one cup, so that we in the company of all the saints may praise and glorify you forever through Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. As our Saviour taught us, so we pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. Jesus, Lamb of God, have mercy on us. Jesus, bearer of our sins, have mercy on us. Jesus, redeemer of the world, grant us peace. It's now that you might want to take your bread and your wine to take for communion. Draw near with faith. Receive firstly the body of our Lord Jesus Christ, which he gave for you, and then his blood, which he shed for you. Eat and drink in remembrance that he died for you, and feed on him in your hearts by faith and with thanksgiving. Amen. our after communion prayer. Almighty God, we thank you for feeding us with the body and blood of your Son, Jesus Christ. Through him we offer you our souls and bodies to be a living sacrifice. Send us out in the power of your Spirit to live and work to your praise and glory. Amen. Thank you, Rob. Now we're going to close our service by singing How Great Thou Art.
thank you for being with us this morning. We hope you found this morning's service to be of help and a blessing to you. And perhaps you want to join us again next week. And all that remains now for me to say is may the peace of God, which passes all understanding, keep our hearts and minds in the knowledge and love of God and of his Son, Jesus Christ, our Lord, and the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be among us and remain with us always. Amen. Go in peace to love and serve the Lord. In the name of Christ. Amen.